What's going on guys? It's Coach Steven with 15 Points of Tennis. And I want to give you some food for thought on my perspective, understanding the player's psyche. Now, I'm going to attack the topic of confidence from three different perspectives. So you're going to see a few videos in this series and I actually expect and hope that you disagree with one or more of these perspectives and that way we can create some very beneficial discussion. Now, when it comes to confidence, confidence is one of the most vague concepts on the planet. Like, what the heck is it? Like, you can't touch it, feel it, it's not tangible. How would you even go about objectively measuring it? And then you ask yourself, how does confidence even work? Is it this like feeling in your body that just comes and goes mysteriously, right? Or do you have to fill your confidence up like a gas tank, you know, with a whole lot of rah rah fist pumping, only to lose it and have it deplete? Or is confidence this fragile thing that you have to protect, right? You have it and you don't lose it. So, like all these questions, and then you have to take that next step into understanding how much does confidence really affect my tennis? Like, if I'm not this naturally confident person, am I doomed? Right? So we're going to start answering some of these questions in this series. And I'm guessing you probably know a players or players with the game, the skills, the talent, but they just can't get over the hump. It's like this invisible force holding them back. And that's why understanding the player's psyche to unlock your potential, I really wish I had a deeper understanding when I started out. All right, so without further ado, if you like this kind of video, it's going to go really deep into the mind. Click that link below to subscribe. Let's get started. Confidence is a feeling of certainty of a given outcome. So in order for you to feel confident, that outcome would have had to happen previously. It would have had to happen in the past, right? Because your basis for confidence has to come from somewhere. So if it hadn't happened in the past, what you're essentially saying is you're making it up in your mind and we call that delusion. It's very interesting because, look, I can make all these positive affirmations. I can look in the mirror and say, Coach Steven, you're the most amazing tennis coach on the planet or on planet Earth. Everyone should be listening to you. You should feel good about it, right? But if there's no basis in reality, it doesn't make it true. So that's where that fine line between confidence and delusion is very fine. And so, look, there are a lot of traditional confidence confidence building techniques out there and I'm not against them. Actually, I like them for different purposes, but let's kind of go through them, right? One is like that motivational pep talk. You look at all these YouTube videos, they try to get you pumped up, right? You can do it. I believe in you. You're going to crush it. No, you're going to crush it. You got, you want it. I know you want, this is what you want, right? And that's all good stuff. It makes it, it raises your adrenaline level, your energy level, but how much more certain of an outcome are you? It doesn't make you more certain of an outcome. And then how about the visualization? And I know visualization, there are a lot of other benefits, but really closing your eyes, closing your eyes and imagining success, imagining yourself winning. Look, I think that's great in terms of to know where you want to be aspirationally, to reinforce your why, to make you more motivated on a day-to-day -day basis. But in terms of winning your match tomorrow, it doesn't make you more certain of that, right? So. So let's give yourself credit here, guys. Like your brain, you're smart. And your brain is very perceptive of understanding what's real and what's fake, right? I could say, close your eyes and imagine you're at Wimbledon and you're hitting that ace against Roger Federer match point. Now open your eyes and be Roger Federer, right? Like, come on, like you, you know, even if you felt good in that moment, you know that's not real. Your brain knows it's not real. So it's very hard to what we call bullshit your brain. Right? You've got to give it something tangible. So remember this formula here. Right? Confidence that you can win is a byproduct of winning. Winning is a byproduct of how well you perform. How well you perform is a byproduct of your skill set. Therefore, improve your skill set, which improves your performance, which improves your your win result, your, your record, which improves your confidence. Bang, very simple formula. And that's the basic premise, guys. Maybe we're just overthinking the whole thing. If you ever heard of competence breeds confidence, 
right? If I ask you, look, how confident are you tying your shoe? You're thinking, probably thinking, what? What do you mean, right? If, if, could you tie your shoe? I mean, you do it every day, essentially, right? Could you tie your shoes with the pressure of someone watching you? How about 10 people all watching you? How about 100 people all watching you? How about if your life depended on it, could you tie your shoe? And really, how much pressure would it take for you to have an emotional breakdown, a mental breakdown, or a physical breakdown where you actually couldn't physically tie your shoe, right? How much pressure would it take? Same thing if you were giving a speech. If you actually practice that speech 10,000 times, even if you were nervous giving that speech in front of an audience, you'd still get a pretty, pretty darn good result. And now, off that good result, then we can draw confidence from that. All right, you see how it works? So we've essentially given you something tangible. You should, so focus on what's tangible you can try, draw confidence up. Don't try to have this uphill battle. It's an uphill battle to just manifest this feeling of confidence if it hasn't happened, all right? Now, I wanna talk more about sources of confidence because that's very important and that's a key part of this video that we're gonna talk about from this initial perspective. So when I talk about sources of confidence, if you ever remember um, the Zimbardo experiment they did at Stanford, right, where they had a, is essentially a role play of students who were prisoners and students who were guards. And what happened was the guards started to treat the prisoners and do terrible and cruel things to them, while the prisoners just accepted the, the miserable treatment they were getting. And the question is, why did this happen? And as human beings, so human beings, we're constantly telling ourselves a, the story. You call it this narrative to help justify, to help give a reason or justify our reality, right? To understand the world better. And, you know, whether you were, something really good happened to you, you're going to say, I was entitled to this because, or something bad happened to you, I deserve this bad thing to happen to me because, right? It could be an excuse, but there's always this story running through our mind. So let me show you how this works, right? And I'm going to blow it up to, you know, a bigger real life example and show you where confidence comes from in life, right? So every, so confidence comes from a source. Let's name a common source. How about status in your environment? Imagine like you're the CEO of a company. You walk in and you're the CEO of the company. It's very easy to have confidence and be commanding. And I bet you whatever gibberish came out of your mouth, you're going to say it with confidence. Duh, you're the CEO. But what if you're the janitor of a company? Well, you're the lowest on the totem pole. Even if you had the most brilliant idea, right, that could revolutionize your business, that your, your, your business you were at, you might talk meekly and softly, right, because you don't have the status in that environment, right? But if the janitor came out and say, what's up, guys? You know what? Last three months, I observed what's going on with our business. I think X, Y, and Z can take our business to the next step. Now, see, now that janitor who, who exudes that confidence, he's not drawing confidence from his status. He's drawing confidence from the merit of his idea. So you always have to be aware in your mind, where am I drawing status? You can draw status, right? If you belong to a rich country club, you might be drawing status from money. Oh, if I was poor, I don't belong there. If I, how about the, the big bully at school? Well, maybe he's drawing that confidence from his physique, right? Being stronger and more intimidating. So, yeah, I know that was kind of full-blown, but you really have to understand this from a tennis perspective, what narrative is running through your head. And when I talk about what's running through your head, okay, for example, for example, I, when I was younger, I would constantly think things like, oh man, this guy's what? This, guy, this guy's not even top 20 in NorCal. He's terrible. There's no way I should lose this match. And I beat him the last time. If I lose to him this time, I didn't get worse, did I? Right? There's no way I should lose to this guy. That creates a different feeling in my body, chemically a different feeling, this feeling of confidence, of certainty, compared to, oh my God, this person's top five in the nation. There's no, I don't even have a chance. And he beat that person? Crazy, right? Crazy. I'd be lucky if I scored three or four games, right? So that's a narrative. And what it comes down to, guys, that narrative that's created from the, your confidence source, that source of confidence, is it an 
external source of confidence or is it an internal source of confidence? The external sources of confidence are ones we can't control. So if your confidence is based on external factors, like your ranking, like your points, like your win-loss record, if you're doing tennis correctly, which you should be, you're going to be continually moving up in the rankings. That means, by nature, you're going to be playing tougher and tougher and tougher opponents. So you're inevitably going to be losing and losing and losing. You're, everyone's constantly losing. They say there's always a bigger fish in the ocean. And that bigger fish is Roger Federer until you beat Roger Federer. So funny enough, because if your confidence is based on these external sources, and you're always going to be losing inevitably, does that mean your confidence will inevitably be shaken? No, it doesn't have to be that way, right? If you put your confidence in your skill set, so your skill set is something you can control, it's something nobody else can dictate. If you put it in your, draw your source of confidence from your skill set, your, that's something you can truly build upon. If there's a, a different environment you're playing in, if there are different opponents you're playing against, right? Different people watching you, different stakes are on the line. One thing you do know is that you, the fuzzy yellow ball, your racket, the dimensions of the court, those things are the same. So your primary focus, everything should be focused around those internal based factors. And that way you can have confidence in every environment. Why? Because you're, you're focused on every part of the environment that's the same every time and that you can control and that's not dependent on anything else. And when you really think about it, everyone is looking up. Everyone's looking up at the next level above them, which means everyone is, to some extent, insecure about their result. Like, oh my God, is, you know, did I do good? Did I, you know, how does this look? How does this reflect upon me, right? And that's called tying your result and your and how well you do to your self-image. No, you are not your results. Don't tie them together. Again, because the more you move up in tennis, you're gonna constantly be right, struggling with that self-image issue. Right? I literally used to think, right, I used to draw my confidence. I used to feel good when I can look at my win-loss record and have a lot of points, be ranked high. Right? But when I move up to that next age group, it would all come crashing down. Now, literally, and look, I don't feel good all the time. You can, you, no one can feel all, good all the time. But I can step into any environment. And I'm not the greatest player, but I know exactly what I can do because I have confidence in my skill set. Right? We, we use that example, and that last example we talked about, you know, having status in your environment, money, you know, different sources of confidence. Well, if you guys know who Mark Cuban is from Shark Tank, he's super rich. But compared to other billionaires like Jeff Bezos and Bill Gates, he is way poor. He's a poor plebeian, right? He's maybe one-tenth or less as rich as they are, even though he's a billionaire. So do you think Mark Cuban would walk into a business meeting with those guys and completely melt and fall apart? Of course not, because he knows what he brings to the table. He knows he's a good business person, and he knows what he can do despite the relative results, right? Never focus on your results. Focus on what you can do. Now at this point, you're probably like, okay, Coach Steven, that's overkill. I get it at this point, right? Block out the external, focus on the internal, right? What's under your control, don't tie your results to your ego, right? But you're probably saying, look, I still, like, Coach Steven, I believe I have the skill set. I can, I'm working on my skill set. My skills are getting better. But when I play a match with real pressure in high intensity, I just can't follow through with it. I just don't do it, right? It's like something's preventing me from really committing to what I do. And that's, so I want to break this down a little further and start by saying, when, before you even try something new in a pressure situation in a match, be sure you really have it handled in practice. Like you should be able to do it with a super high proficiency in practice. And if you can't, don't even try it in the match, okay? But we're going to assume that you have that proficiency. And everything we mentioned up with confidence up to this point, know that confidence is a very flaky thing, right? It's, it's this feeling, right? It, confidence comes and goes like the wind. One day you can just wake up on the wrong side of the bed. Who knows, right? And take your life, for instance. 
maybe one day you're feeling super positive about your life. You're loving the direction your life is headed. Right? You're confident about where your life is going. And then literally the next day you go to sleep, wake up, nothing about your life situation has changed. But now you're second guessing yourself. You're thinking, oh my God, is this what I really want in life? Am I doing the right thing? Should I make a change? Right? That's how, how quickly confidence can turn. Now what's, I want you to kind of evolve your mindset here from confidence. Because what's a lot more steadfast and concrete than confidence is what I call something you need to build is called belief, which is much more important. All right? Like you're, because you're, let's say your life, for instance, it's, it's very subjective in where you want to take it, right? You, someone could pose a question that could make you a little doubtful and hesitant. But take something like gravity. How about gravity? Well, you're pretty confident that gravity exists. No, you believe that gravity exists because it's a fundamental principle of the universe, right? What would it take, really, now what would it really take for someone to convince you that gravity doesn't exist, right? No matter whether, whether you're feeling good or bad that day, no matter what side of the bed you wake up on, you're going to believe that gravity exists. And that's how I want you to think about tennis. I believe in the fundamental principles of tennis. I believe when I play someone who pushes the ball and hits soft, I need to take as much time away as possible or I'll be running around a lot. I believe when I'm inside the court, I need to hit the ball low. I believe when I'm behind the baseline, I need to hit the ball high and deep. I believe my backhand fundamentals are technically sound according to proper body mechanics that even if I have a terrible patch with my backhand and hit terribly for a little bit, I'm going to continue being aggressive with my backhand, continue to stay committed, and continue to execute, again, because I believe in those fundamentals. And then I believe in my YouTube videos, right? If someone tells me I suck, if someone calls me a bad name and I go home and cry, sure, I'll cry for a little bit, but no matter how well I'm feeling, because I believe in my videos, I believe it's helping at least one or two players out there, I'm going to still put them out. So really the question of the question of this video is what do you believe about tennis? You have to really nail that down and solidify it. And I would say if you can't answer that question, you have to learn you probably should learn a lot more about tennis in order to solidify your beliefs. And as you're doing this, you better have a very very firm reason of why behind it, right? To to back that up and to solidify it. Right? To say something like, oh, I do this because my coach told me so, that's not, a very, that's not a good enough why. Because Roger Federer does it, that's a better why. Okay, that's pretty good. But because Roger Federer does it do, according to proper body mechanics, X, Y, Z, A, B, C, that's maybe the best why, right? To really know the science behind it. Not just that Roger Federer, but to go all the way deep. Ask why three times. And that way, once you truly believe something, it's very easy to align your thoughts, words, and actions. Not that your belief system is correct. Like, you could believe the wrong thing, but at least now you're going to commit to it. And I'm not saying just because I believe in it, I won't change my beliefs. No, you should change your beliefs. If you have better evidence supporting those beliefs, absolutely change those beliefs, right? But once you have a strong belief system, then this confidence thing, guys, this confidence thing sounds silly once you start talking about what's true and not true about tennis, what you believe and don't believe, then it literally comes down to doing the right thing. Because yes, if you truly believe in it, that you have no choice when you're as confident about what you're doing on the tennis court as you are confident that gravity exists. All right, so, and that's what I wanna leave you with, and that's what I want you thinking about over this next few weeks before we put that next video on confidence out. Thank you guys for watching. I know this is not the typical tennis video we did on the court with the racket, but if, if you really enjoy this video, do like and subscribe. I'll leave your comments below. I look forward to creating an open dialogue and further exploring this whole to topic of confidence and understanding the player psyche. It's vital for you to achieve your potential. Thanks so much.